Welcome design students. In this video we're going to learn about opacity, layer blending, and various effects that you can apply to your shapes and your compositions. All of the things on this page utilize these effects. This design is made using different blending modes and I'll show you exactly how to do this in just a minute. This design is made using opacity and effects. The blur effect in particular right here. This design is made using a gradient fill and an effect called mirror right here. And this design is created using blending modes. And this one, of course, is just about like that one. So let's get started. So I've created a new composition here. It's empty. And if you want to, you can follow along. Notice I've made my rulers visible. I'm going to drag a guide out here. And then I'm going to make a circle. And I'm just going to hold down shift so it's a perfect circle. Then I'm going to align it with the guide here. And then I'm going to hold down Alt, click and drag my left mouse button and drag it, make a copy of this ellipse and drag it to the other side. Before we go much further, let's go ahead and change the fill here. Select one of them, click the color swatch and drag this down to about halfway between white and black. That would be a 50% gray. Select the second one, get the eyedropper and sample the color on the first one. And then select both of them by holding down shift and clicking on the other one, or you can draw a selection box. And we're going to group them by clicking on the group items button. And now let's make a copy. I'm gonna hit Control or Command C on a Mac. And then I'm going to come up to edit and select paste in place. And that puts the copy right exactly on top of the source shape. And now I want to rotate the copy I made 90 degrees. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click transform. And then I'm going to type in 90 degrees and push enter. And now I've made a copy and rotated it 90 degrees. And then I'm going to select the first group. Oops, I'm sorry. I guess I have to push escape to get back to my, well, V to get back to my select tool. There we go. I'm going to select the first group. And I'm going to make another copy by hitting Control or Command C. Edit, paste in place. And this one, I'm going to transform 45 degrees. Push Enter. And now we're going to take another copy of this one. And we should still have it on the clipboard, so we don't need to hit Control or Command C again. I'm just going to come up to Edit, Paste in Place. And I did make another copy. And this time, we're going to type in negative 45 and push Enter. And that just puts it on the opposite side at 45 degrees. So we now have this series of spheres that sort of overlap each other. And if you want to see what this looks like, we can come to View and select Outline View. And you can see that that sort of looks like a spirographic design. And so now let's put another circle right directly behind this. So let's select Ellipse and try to get right in the middle of the page. Hold down shift and your left mouse button and drag to make a perfect circle and while you're dragging add alt and that creates from the middle. This is not perfectly aligned but make it bigger than your um, original design and then try to center it on that design. In the layer panel come over here select it and drag it all the way to the back or the bottom of the layer stack. And then we can use our arrow keys to sort of nudge it in place. So now comes the fun part. Select it, and we're going to fill it with a color. You can fill it with whatever color you want, but just make sure that your color is not fully saturated and fully bright. Make sure it has some darkness in it. And I'll explain why in just a minute. Now this doesn't look too impressive, but we can make it look really good by using blending modes. And layer blending modes work by adding contrast to layers and causing them to interact with each other differently based on how they work with the pixels that are in degrees from black to white. This is why we have to use a color that's not fully saturated or fully bright. It needs to have some white or black sort of added to it in order for it to work properly. 
So if you select one of the groups that we made here and you come over here, you can see in the appearance group, you can see that there is a blending pull down menu. If you click that, you'll see there's a lot of different blending modes. In Photoshop and Illustrator, these are divided into groups. There's a darken group, a lighten group, a contrast group, an inversion group, a cancellation group, and a component group. And we're not going to talk about all of those, but just know that they react with white and black and gray pixels in the layers to change how they look. Blending modes in the lighten group do the opposite of blending modes in the darken group. So for example, darken is in the darken group and it does one thing and lighten does exactly the opposite. So let's select the blending mode. Let's select multiply. It's in the darken group and you can quickly see that that has an effect, but just on that one circle. So let's select all the layers by holding down shift and clicking on all of them or actually click on the first one, hold down shift and click on the last one. And let's change them all to back to normal and then change them all to multiply and we get a certain effect. Now this effect is can be changed by either adjusting the opacity of the design or we can adjust the color, the grayness of it, or we can adjust the color of the background shape. We can lighten it, saturate it more, kind of play with it like that. So let's look, let's select all of these layers again. Select the first one, hold down shift, select the last one. And let's try another darken blending mode. Let's try darken. That doesn't look very good. Let's try color burn. That looks pretty cool. Let's try linear burn, which is light color burn, only it just uses different math. And let's try some lighten. Let's try screen, which is in the lighten group. And again, we can play with what it looks like by adjusting the opacity or adjusting the color of the background layer. Let's try overlay. Now, I'm going to select the background ellipse and see if I can get a different look by adjusting the brightness of the color. And you can see that I certainly can. Now, you can get some very interesting effects with photographs using blending modes in Photoshop but they're also useful in vector graphics as I've just demonstrated. I'm going to add a background to this real quick just to make it look better. So I'm going to create a rectangle, drag it behind everything, and I'm going to change its fill to something that is almost black but not quite. Or maybe even add a gradient to it. I can make this look even more realistic by adding a couple of effects. Now you can add these effects down here um, by clicking any one of them and clicking plus. So the first thing I'm going to add to this is an inner shadow and that does exactly what it sounds like. If you click, if you drag the blur, you can see the inner shadow coming in and you can adjust its position here and you can adjust its opacity here. Right now it's at 50% opacity and you can also adjust its color here. So I'm going to leave that there. I might make it just a little bit bigger. And that makes it look a little bit 3D. If you decide that you don't like an effect, to get rid of it, all you got to do is click the trash can. If you want to see what it looks like just with it out it, you can click the, the eye next to it, the visibility eye, and that turns it on and off. So while I have this ellipse selected here, I'm going to make a copy, Control or Command C. I'm going to paste it in place. And then I'm going to select the bottom ellipse, the one that's behind, and I'm going to delete the inner shadow, and I'm going to add a blur. And I'm going to increase the blur amount, and as you can see, that sort of adds a glow to it. But I'm going to also change the fill to a little lighter color, so I kind of get this um, highlight around the thing. Now to experiment with this more, uh, we could experiment with the opacity of the different layers. We could change the blending mode and we could experiment with the fill either of the ones in front or the ones in back. could also add more shapes to this design and experiment with their blending modes and fills. For example, I could add an effect to this to get 
get different looks. You can also experiment with the fill colors of your background by playing around with those colors. We can add flags and change colors to get some very interesting effects. Incidentally, I didn't tell you this, but if you add a flag by accident or you add one you don't want on your gradient, you can get rid of it by simply clicking and dragging it off the page, and that gets rid of it. Actually, I noticed that when I added this blur effect to this square here, the blending mode sort of went away. If I delete that effect, it comes back. So that's a little strange. I don't know why that happens, but um, you might want to be aware of that. But remember, you can also layer these things together to get the effect you want. I can add sort of a highlight to this sphere and make it look realistic using blur and opacity. Let me show you how to do that. I'm going to get the pen tool, and I'm just going to sort of draw a triangle here like this. And then I'm going to select it oops, and fill it with white and put it on top of everything. And I'm going to use the subselect tool to sort of play around with the handles to give it a better shape. Follow the sphere shape a little bit more. Now to make this look like a reflection, what we would do is we would um, adjust the opacity. And then we can add a blur effect to it. And that makes it look like a reflection. This video is getting kind of long, so I don't want to make anything else. But I do want to remind you that, um, that you can um, use these effects with text. This text here is simply text with a gradient fill and a border added to it. And then it also has a, um, this one does too, it also has a mirror effect on it. And the mirror effect can be found underneath effects under more. If you click more, you can see that there are different effects here. There's vignette, the mirror one is right here. And what that does is it sort of adds a reflection. And you can play around with the opacity of the reflection. You can play around with the, the, the offset of it, which is the distance from the object. And you can play around with the height, in other words, how far it goes down. So that is adding a mirror effect. Also, here, as I said, this is exactly what we did up here, only here, yeah, I uh, just put some text on here and filled it with a gradient and changed the blend mode, a black-white gradient, and changed the blend mode to screen. And I put a three-pixel border on it as well. So what I'd like you to do for, for this assignment is create a design like this, use some overlapping shapes, maybe put a background gradient fill on it, and play around with the blending modes and effects to create a design of your own. You can use text, shapes, uh, this shape might be better, um, might be look more interesting if we had instead of just two uh, ellipses, maybe if we had three overlapping here and we rotated them. You could also use squares. We can use different stars, uh, polygons to just create an interesting uh, look on this background. So um, that is opacity, blending, and effects. And I'll see you in the next video.